All right, you guys, today we are going to learn how to make a histogram in the graphing calculator. So first up here, I have a whole list of data right here. It's already organized if you follow it by column in ascending order. And we have 30 total pieces of data. So our n value is 30. So the very first thing that you have to do is enter your data set in a single list. L1 is always the easiest, and that's really what we have practiced in class. So to get to this menu, you hit Stat. It's your first choice, Edit. And then to enter the data, you type the number, press Enter until all numbers are entered. But I want to also give you this little caveat. You want to check to make sure that you've inputted all data correctly, correctly. Okay, so I'd like you to pause, take a moment, enter your data. So here I am, again, I'm starting at my home screen. If you're seeing anything other than this screen, you go second mode and it takes you home. So I'm hitting stat right here. My first choice, it's already on number one. I wanna click edit, so enter right here. And then you're gonna take a moment and enter all of that data into the L1. Once you have it entered, you want to go back, skim through it, double check. It's very easy to type something in incorrectly. You might make a duplicate piece of data or you might type in like an extra zero. So you just want to make sure that you're skimming through and make sure that you're double checking that everything looks correct. Okay, if something did not look correct, let me just make sure I'm at 30. Yes, I have 30 pieces of data. So it's showing me right here in list one, this is my 30th piece of data. This is its value at 65. So make sure that your data set matches what is up here. Otherwise, you'll have to either delete a piece of data if it's something extra, or you'll have to insert something back in if you lost a piece of data, okay? You do that here. Here's the delete button, which will delete a piece of data if you have something extra or second delete lets you insert something that you may have missed. If you type something in wrong, you can always just type over it, hit enter, and it corrects it. So why don't you pause for a moment, type in your data, check it, and let's move on to the next step. All right, next step. So here we wanna set up our stat plot. So right down here, that's what we're going to do. But before we do anything, I want you actually to turn all of the plots off. And then we're going to make sure that we all only have on that first stat plot. So let me write down what I'm going to do first right here. So I'm going to turn all of the plots off to start. Then I'm only going to turn on the first plot. Okay, so again, we're going to turn all of the plots off. And then we're going to go back and turn on just the first stat plot. So here is how we do that. So right now I'm still in my list, right? I just need to make sure I go home. So second mode. So I'm at my home screen. I want to go to my stat plots. So we're going to hit second and y equals. So second and y equals here and here. We're going to hit them together, and that takes us to the stat plot menu. So I'm going to hit second y equals. I'm in my stat plots. 
but like I said, I'm going to turn them all off so we have a nice blank slate to start with. So that's your fourth choice to turn all of the stat plots off. You can hit four or you could use your arrows to go down to it. We hit enter. It's asking us, are you sure? Are you really sure you want to turn off the stat plots? And we're going to say, yes, yes, I want them all off. So I'm going to hit enter and it tells me done. Okay, then I'm going to go back to my stat plots. So second y equals, I should see off, off, off. And then I want to click on that very first one right here. I want to hit enter and I want to turn it on. So I need to make sure that my blinking cursor is on on and then I can hit enter. So that stores it on and then I need to move down to what type of graph do I want? Well, I want a histogram, right? I don't want a scatter plot. I don't want a box plot. I don't want a line graph. I want a histogram. So I'm using my arrow down to get to the type and then my arrow to the right to make sure that I have a black blinking cursor on the histogram. So here I am. I'm going to hit enter to save it on histogram and then arrow down. Here it's saying, where's your data? Well, our data is in the first list. It's in the L1. So make sure this reads L1. You hit second one to have the L1 show up. And then we should all have a frequency of one. All right, once we are good, let's go home. So back to here. I want you to troubleshoot one more thing because this is a common issue that I see. So often we have students who have used these calculators before or they've gotten jostled in someone's backpack. And this is the biggest issue that I see when kids tell me that there's an issue when they graph. So the issue is in their function list. So I want you to check your function list, which is y equals. So we're going to check our function list to make sure that we don't have any funny functions entered in the calculator. Or sometimes when it bumps in your backpack, you get like just a, a decimal or something that just doesn't make sense. And it tells you error because it doesn't know how to graph just a decimal. So check your function list to make sure it is clear. All right, so to check my function list, right, I'm back home right here. I'm just going to clear it so I see a blank slate. Okay, I'm going to hit y equals right here, and here's my function list. So technically I could graph multiple functions. I could graph a square root function, a logarithmic function, an exponential function, whatever my little heart desires. I have options, okay? I just wanna use my arrows to go through and make sure that I see nothing. I want it clear. I want nothing here. So here is where if I had like a decimal. This is what I'm talking about. Often I will see this when kids are like, my graph's not working. This is usually what it is. Is there something in your function list? So I would go over that decimal right here. I would delete it like that. And then I'm, again, I'm just quickly scanning through, making sure I don't have anything that I don't want in my function list. And right now we don't want anything, nothing in that function list. All right, last step. So now here, let's make a graph. So what's nice is that our calculator can do this for us. Okay, I'm going to always just go home, so I'm always starting from a blank canvas. All right, so our calculator will build us a histogram. It's not a perfect histogram, but it's an excellent starting point. So to get there, I need to hit zoom, zoom right here, right? Takes up this screen right here. I want to either go arrows down to choice nine or just hit nine. And boom, here we are. So this is our histogram. So zoom nine, zoom stat builds us a histogram. So this is the histogram that you are seeing. When I hit trace, so trace right here. So I see that blinking cursor right there. So what it's telling me down below, I see it here as well. I see that it's telling me what my class consists of. And it's kind of a funny class width. Right, it's telling me from 12 
to just under 20.83 recurring. And that n value of 8, right, that's telling me my height of that class. That's what its frequency is, its count. There are eight pieces of data that are falling right here in this class. And I can use my arrow to the right. I can see my new class that goes from 20.83 recurring to 29.6 recurring, and the height of it is six. So there's a frequency account of six. In fact, all of these have a height of six. And then here, two, one, and one. So I'm just using the trace and then my arrows to see what my heights are. Okay, so one thing that I'm noticing right now is that I have seven classes. I'm gonna write that. So we're seeing seven classes. And like I said, this is kind of a funny class, right? Those are kind of funny boundaries to set. So I'm gonna write that as kind of a funny class width. Okay, so then I want to look at my window. What is my window showing me right now? So when I hit window right there, it takes me to my settings. So my calculator came up with this. So it's showing me my X min, my X max. So that's the span here to here. It's telling me what the class width is, 8.83 recurring. Let's see if we can tighten that up and make it something clean, a nice clean integer value. My y min, I don't know why we're in the negatives, right? The, the least we could have in any class is zero if there's no data there. So we should always start that at zero. And the y max, it just depends on how much data we have. I usually start at 10 and then I adjust from there. So let me pull this away and let's tweak it. All right, so here, this cursor is saying, well, let's try to make the class with nine. All right, so the class width we want to adjust. We want to make the class width change to nine. Right now, it's at 8.83 recurring. Okay, and then here I'm just gonna say, let's instead of having seven classes, let's try to make it six classes. So I'm gonna write that. Let's change to six classes. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to revisit my spread. So my spread right now, low to high, is 12 to 65. Okay. I want to leave some space right here. So I'm just going to store that right here and show a little work down in this region right here. So my spread is 12 to 65. And I want six classes. I want my class width to be nine, right? I'm just keeping that in mind. Usually I always think about this part first, change to six classes. Okay, so let's look at what is, what is 65 take away 12? Okay, it's 53. Okay, is 53 divisible by six? No. What is the next integer value up that would be divisible by six, and that would be 54. So picture this as 54. Again, I'm looking for something that's divisible by six. So I'm looking at that 53 and I'm going up to the next number that's divisible by six, and that's 54. So now, if I look back at my spread and I adjust it, let's do an adjusted spread. We were 12 to start, okay, and it was at 65. Our largest piece of data was 65. We can see that that difference is 53, but if we made it 54, then we'd have something divisible by six. So instead of making it go 12 to 65, I'm gonna make it go one higher to 66. So when it's one unit that I have to incorporate, I'll always add it over here. Okay, over here, this is the starting amount of data. So if I was to make more of a cushion, I would really be taking away here and adding here. Just one unit, I always wanna do it over here. So I'm adjusting my spread from 12 to 66. So let me mark that here. So my window is gonna change. 
I'm going to change it. I'm going to write down my new settings here. So I'm going to say, well, let's go 12 to 66. So again, there was no need to overshoot by this much. Our largest piece of data was 65. Okay, well, what happens when we take that 54, that difference of 54, and we split it by six classes, it will produce the class width. So right here is the number of classes. And here is the class width. So my x scale is my class width. We're saying, let's make it 9. Let's change it from what it was originally. Let's make it 9. Okay, the y min, like I said, I can't have a negative amount of data. I could have zero data. So I should always start at 0. Okay, my y max, I usually start at 10. And then I, I fiddle with it to fix it if I see something cut off or if I see too much empty space at the top. So I usually adjust that 10. Okay, but it's a good starting point. Your Y scale stays at one. Your X res will always stay at one. Okay, so let me go back to my calculator and adjust it. Window, all right. So I'm at my window. Okay, let me get it so you can see it right there, good. So my X min is at 12, right? I'm gonna make it go to 66 instead. So I'm using my adjusted spread. I'm picking something where the difference between them is divisible by the amount of classes that I wanted. I wanted six classes. So the difference between those numbers is 54. When I divide 54 by six, I get nine. X scale is your class width, should be nine. Okay, your Y min should be zero. No need to be in the negative, so here's my zero, okay? My Y max, I would start it at 10. Like I said, I might adjust that in a little bit. My Y scale, my X res, both stay at one. So now here, if I wanna look at my new graph, let me slide it over. I'm gonna look at them side by side, okay? I have to hit graph. If I hit zoom stat again, it's gonna restore my original settings, and I don't want that. I want to look at this pretty window right now. I'm trying to tighten things up. So if I hit graph, here's how it looks tightened up. Okay, so I'm seeing the same shape, right? It's unimodal. I see a cluster of data right over here, and it's tapering off to the right. So this would be unimodal, and it would be skewed to the right, right? It's skewed in the direction that the tail leads us. So this is skewed to the right. My shapes are pretty close, right? They look pretty much the same, except I've really just tightened things up. I fit my data a little bit better. I see a little bit of a gap right here, so I might even adjust my window and make it go from 0 to 9 instead of 10. Again, I'm hitting graph, and I see it just tightened up even more. So my goal is just to kind of fit the data the best I can. My calculator gives me an excellent starting point but I know how to adjust my window to finesse it and make it look even better. So now when I hit trace and I go through, I can see what each class is actually made up of. So here it's saying from 12 to just under 21. Okay, the height is eight. Okay, move to the right. This one is 21 to just under 30. The height is six and so forth. So I've gotten rid of all of the decimals here I've made it nice, clean integer values, right? All I've done is I've tightened up my graph, I've perfected it, I've made my, my picture even prettier. And that was the goal of what I wanted to show you today. All right, have a good rest of your day.